Well, hello, this is Dale Callahan uh, with Ask Dr. Callahan, and I just wanted to come today and share with you some information about some of the questions we always get about why we use what we use in terms of material. So at Ask Dr. Callahan, we are a provider of, uh, I would say homeschool, but that's not turning out not to be the case anymore. It's, it's, all, it's all kind of things. But we've been providing STEM education, STEM being science, technology, engineering, mathematics, for uh, students, uh, for the most part, it was in uh, technology, I mean, uh, in homeschool. But um, like I said, there's other things going on out there now. But one of the things that we always get asked is why we do things the way we do. So let me kind of tell you a story uh, about how this got started. I started as a faculty member in the School of Engineering at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Uh, some years ago. Now, anybody that knows anything about engineering is the job demand for engineering is really high. People who graduate with engineering degrees, they're going to get a job practically uh, with, with very few exceptions. But what we were seeing was there was a huge demand on one side and very few students coming in, relatively speaking to the demand. And then many would drop out of engineering and then they would go into other fields. Uh, and the reason was math. Now, at the same time I took this position, we started homeschooling, and so I became aware of what was going on in the homeschooling world and paying attention. And I saw that uh, some other students that came in that were homeschooled uh, were awesome in everything but math. They, were, they really excelled over the typical university student except in math. They were average. They were just like the others. Uh, but but I just started realizing that, hey, there's something wrong here. And just because my curious mind, I started uh, listening to other faculty. And they were telling me that mathematics was the killer to engineering. And it wasn't just our university. It was all over the nation and probably all over the world. So I started talking to our math department at the university and said, hey, what is it? Uh, I mean, do all students just, are, are they all lousy in math? And uh, they said, well, if they come through three or four schools locally, regionally to us, they were awesome. Everybody else struggled. Uh, as, a, as a general rule, everybody else struggled. So uh, I started get investigating those schools, and they were private and public schools. They were higher end private and public schools. And I started talking to some of the administrators there and found out what they did. And their rule of thumb was, uh, number one, when we teach math, we teach that a student understand the math, not just able to do the work. Uh, we call it cookbook math. Uh, I'll tell you why in a minute. But the other thing that they did is they used college level textbooks. They were trying to prepare students for the college and for STEM careers, STEM again being science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, things that were folk, had heavy duty math concentrations. And they were preparing students for these things and they knew that uh, why should I use a weaker or a watered down or you know some curriculum that wasn't uh, that was at the high school level. They had many reasons. I won't get into those now. But so they just said, let's just use what they're going to see at the university. Made sense. I thought it was, you know, and there's so many things that when you look back at what causes success, you know, I kind of call it a stupid, obvious model. You know, the it's it's obvious, you know, when I when I heard them say that, and I'm like, well, that, gee, that makes sense. Uh, that's so obvious once you say it that way. Uh, so we started as we were homeschooling in our in our homeschool, and we had daughters that were in high school. We did the same thing. We just took the we took the university textbooks, uh, the popular university textbooks in algebra two and trig and calculus, and we started using them in our homeschool. And uh, then when this company got started, we started using those same textbooks. Um, now uh, we had a problem when we got to uh, to geometry and we got to algebra. Because at the university level, you don't particularly see those in the STEM fields. Uh, at the STEM fields, we're assuming you come in strong in math, and so we're assuming that they didn't have that issue. Uh, so when we started uh, learning that we needed to develop in our company a geometry and an algebra two, I mean an algebra, an algebra one, what we would consider it, an algebra one in a geometry course, uh, we didn't have anything to choose from. Um, 
And a lot of our customers were say, use Harold Jacobs material. So we kept hearing that over and over again. Uh, well, us being wiser than the average uh, Joe, or at least we so we thought, uh, we went out and bought I don't know how many geometry books. We went to libraries. We talked to. Uh, we had them shipped to us as uh, as uh, as a uh, vendor and stuff like that. And and I just I just had stacks of geometry books. Now let me just give you uh, full disclosure. I despised geometry when I was in high school. I despised it. I thought, why are we drawing these stupid lines and stupid angles and, and trying to prove this is equal to this? And I was like, what's the point of all this? Uh, I wasn't bad at it, but I didn't understand it. Matter of fact, I didn't understand it until we started packaging together a geometry course. Uh, is, and so I was looking at all these books and I was breaking out in hives because I was looking out at this stuff that I was like, oh, man, this is all that stupid stuff again. And then uh, we had Harold Jacobs' book. Boy, was it different. It was real world. It looked at geometry and the things that go on in, in buildings, the things that go on in, uh, in trees and architectures and space and, and even with medicine. It had the geometry of the world in the book. It was teaching real world geometry. And then it had the proofs even that we talked about, but the proofs made sense of what you were trying to accomplish. And, the, and he walked you through the proofs. Uh, and it was at that point that I realized, oh my gosh, this is logic. Geometry is logic. Now you would have thought, now by this time I had a PhD in engineering, you would have thought that I connected, but well, you know, we don't always connect until we start looking deep. Uh, but I, I realized this is the basis of logic. At the time, I was doing a lot of poly, apologetics work. If you don't know what that means, then ignore that. But I was doing a lot of apologetics work. We were dealing with a lot of logical issues. And I realized what's going on math, mathematically here in geometry, is exactly what we see in apologetics arguments and in political arguments and any kind of arguments. And we started seeing where arguments don't make sense. Geometry was the foundation of that. Wow, I totally missed that. Uh, Harold Jacobs got that in his material. So it was just excellent material in terms of making math reach the real world. And, G and algebra was the same thing. As we went into algebra, we found that his book was reachable and it made sense of what was going on in the mathematics. Now here's what I meant by cookbook. And here's why I think this is so, so important, is cookbook mathematics is what we would call, if you can go and use a cookbook, you can put me and you can put me in your kitchen and you could give me a cookbook and give me a fairly well stocked kitchen of stuff that I know what it means. Uh, and I could probably cook a meal and that's edible, you know, that you would eat. Uh, but take the cookbook away and you don't want to eat what I've prepared. You know, I'm no chef. So, the, the, and the reason is, I can follow a recipe, I can follow a cookbook and get from point A to point B to point C and have the meal prepared for you, but I'm no chef. I can't walk in there with the ingredients and figure out, this is what salt does, and this is what this does, and this is how this interacts with this, and this is uh, spicy, and this is not, so you put these together. I'm useless there. That's not my thing. Uh, that's the way, though, we teach that's the way we teach mathematics almost everywhere let's uh, it's not it's not one thing person's fault or not we tend to teach mathematics from a point of view of cookbook follow the rules from point a to point b and then uh, and then here's another problem just like it now we in educational systems they try not to do that they try to get students to do what we would call understand conceptually what's going on now that is so critical in what we're trying to accomplish here. The reason the students, when they went into engineering, were not succeeding was they knew how to do the math, they knew how to follow the cookbook, they knew all the formulas, they knew all the recipes, but they didn't understand what they were doing. They didn't logically get the concepts of what was going on. They couldn't look at a graph and realize, oh, that's the kind of equation that is. They couldn't look at an equation and say, I think I know about what that graph's like. Those kind of things is conceptually knowing what it is. Look, mathematics is nothing but a language. 
It's just a language. And it's just like when we open a book, we don't read every letter and sound out every word. We just understand by looking at it. We absorb so much by looking at it. We read road signs by just looking at them. We absorb them. We understand conceptually what's going on and we process it quickly. That's what we're looking for in mathematics. And when you can do that, you understand the language. Harold Jacobs and his geometry helped us to understand the language because he was relating to the real world. Algebra and what uh, he was doing there helped in his Algebra 1 course, or he calls it elementary algebra, uh, it helps us relate to the real world. That is so critical because if you can do that, if you can understand algebra and you can understand geometry and you can understand algebra 2 and trig and calculus, you're ready for anything. Now, I will, I'm going to give you one other thought here. One of uh, Many of our faculty members in engineering were telling me it's not that students don't understand Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 and differential equations and all this complex mathematics. It's that they don't understand algebra. They missed it in algebra, and so it just was a multiplying effect. They never really understood what they were doing. They didn't understand what variables were. They didn't understand what graphing was. They didn't understand what equations meant and that it meant relationships. They didn't understand any of the basic concepts. And so they could, they could proceed through courses, and they could do the cookbook methodolo methodology, but they didn't understand. Boy, that is so critical. So as you are looking in your home school, we encourage you to find some awesome material that your student can, I mean, they got to be able to grasp it. they got to be able to relate to it. they got to understand how it works in the real world. At the algebra and geometry levels, that is so critical. A good solid foundation there, and they can move on and do Algebra 2 and Trig and Calculus and anything else they want. But without that solid foundation, the rest just starts to crumble, and then they have to make that up later. So I hope this helps you as you start to prepare and, and as you're looking at your homeschool uh, to do some resources. But again, we, we solidly endorse uh, what uh, Harold Jacobs has done in algebra and geometry. And we are so thrilled that Master Books has brought these uh, books back to life in a, in a new revised edition. So leave us any comments. And if you need any help, you can give us a shout at support at AskDrCallahan.com. If you need help picking things out, making decisions, Hey, we'd love to hear from you. Of course, you could uh, pick us up here on Facebook also. Have a great one.